You know, it seems like I'm spending a lot of time this week responding to viewer mail and viewer uh, comments that they make. And you know what? I'm fine with that. Like I said, I love interacting with my audience, so I don't mind answering the questions and addressing topics. Plus, uh, it means I don't have to think of anything to talk about today. So today I wanted to address something that came up in a video I made yesterday where I talked about customizing guns. Uh, a lot of people know I don't care for polymer guns, and after I made that video, several people kind of implied that I don't like polymer guns because they're ugly. You know, it's the aesthetics that I don't like about polymer guns. Well, that could be one reason why I wouldn't like polymer guns, and it'd be a perfectly good reason. If you don't like the way a gun looks, get another gun. There's so many guns available that you can get a great gun that you also like the looks of. But aesthetics is not a problem for me when it comes to polymer guns. I actually like the way most polymer guns look. Uh, a lot of them look very futuristic, and I love that. I'm a sci-fi nerd. Just love sci-fi. So I love the fact uh, that a lot of them look more futuristic. And I even love the simplistic looks of the Glock. I really like the way Glock looks. In fact, I think Glocks have a certain simplistic beauty. So if I like the way they look, what's my problem? Is it performance? I think we all know it's not performance. A lot of polymer guns, in fact, most polymer guns, perform very well. You can get a really well-performing polymer gun. It's not hard to do. Most of them are great guns when it comes to performance. So that's not my issue. Uh, so you might say, well, what is the issue? Is it something like accuracy? Uh, no, it's not accuracy. Now, I will say the polymer guns are a little less inherently accurate than most all steel guns, but there's a reason for that, and it's because they're polymer. When it's polymer, it has to have a little bit more room to move, a little bit more room to flex, so there has to be a little bit more of a tolerance there, a little looser tolerance. So inherently, it might be a little bit less accurate, but it's such a tiny difference, and I'm not the world's greatest shot, so it's going to perform pretty much the same in my hands, so accuracy is not my issue either. My issue is when it comes to wear. Wear is my big issue. Now, I'm not saying that polymer guns wear out fast. They don't. They last for quite a while. Am I saying they wear out faster than metal guns? Well, yes, they do. They do wear out faster than metal guns, and there's a good reason for that. Uh, it's because they're polymer. Polymer is just softer, and it does wear a little more. And some of the things they have to do to try to prevent wear, like I said, like giving it a little room to flex, I just don't like. I don't like that flex in the frame, although I know it has to be there. It's kind of like when you're standing on the second floor of a mall, or you're standing on a bridge, and you stop moving, and you can feel the ground going up and down under you, and you're like, what the fuck's going on? Is this about to break? No. It has to have that flex, or it would break and fall down. Same thing with polymer. It has to be able to move a little bit, or it would be too rigid. It would be too brittle. So when you shoot the gun, it has to have room to flex. If you've ever seen a Glock fire in slow motion, you see a lot of frame flex. I don't like frame flex. I don't like how it feels in my hand, and it does affect accuracy a little tiny bit, but like I said, not enough I'm going to notice it, but I really don't like the feel of that frame flexing. It's just something I don't like. Another thing I don't like about polymer guns and the way they wear is when you have metal parts and polymer parts together, you run into some issues because those are two very dissimilar substances and they have to work together. So a lot of times if you see metal parts that are covered with polymer, the polymer will wear off. That's just normal. It's something you have to deal with when you're mixing two dissimilar materials, and that can cause multiple problems. One of the problems is just like I mentioned, you'll start to see plastic wearing away wherever it covers metal. Another problem is when polymer and metal parts come together where they just touch each other, where they sit inside each other, etc., you can't have too much of a difference in how hard they are because these things have to work together. So if you have something like metal that's you're really hard, let's say on a scale of one to 10, this is a 10. Well, then this, the polymer, can't be a one because if this 10 right here, and I shouldn't do this movement while I'm doing this, but if the 10 here is battering against the one all day long, the one's not gonna last very long. It's gonna be obliterated. So you have to find a medium here. You have to find a, a range where they can actually work together without one destroying the other too quickly. 
So sometimes that means the metal has to be a little softer and the polymer has to be a little harder. Well, if the polymer's harder, it's going to wear a little more. It's going to be a little more brittle. And if the steel is actually a little softer, you might have some breakage in the long term. Now, am I saying that's going to be a problem short term? No, but long term, it very much can be. That's why most contracts for polymer guns with police departments, etc., have wear and replacement uh, contingencies in them. If guns start to wear and parts start to break, they actually replace the gun. And that's not over a long term. That's over like three or four years they expect this to start happening. So that's just something that happens. Uh, it's not a horrible thing that kills polymer. Polymer still has lots of other advantages. It's so much lighter and it's so much more inexpensive that it's worth it to have a little extra wear. But that's something you're going to have to deal with. When parts come together, they're going to wear if they're dissimilar. You might have metal that breaks because it's a little softer than it could be. Uh, and you might have polymer wear out, like say when a pin goes in a hole in a polymer gun. Well, those tend to get a little wobbled out after a while and they start to become loose. That's something that happens a lot on police guns, etc. that get shot a lot. You know, the ones that are used for training or range guns. Well, that's an issue because the polymer part of the gun is the actual receiver. So on a gun like a Glock, that gun is you know, toast, <laughs> because you can't uh, actually replace just the plastic. You have to replace the entire receiver and it's kind of expensive. So that's kind of an issue. But like I say, not a big issue short term. It's just a big issue long term. And maybe it's because I was raised really poor in Appalachia, uh, but I don't like things that I know are going to wear out, which is stupid because I could very seldomly keep a gun more than five years, uh, you know, for actual use. So I don't know why I worry about it, but I do. It's just something that bothers me, so I don't like it. Another thing is holster wear, especially if you use a retention holster. If you use a retention holster with a polymer gun, you're going to start to see some wear inside the trigger guard if it has a trigger guard latch. If it actually latches on your trigger guard, you're going to see a lot of wear there. That shows you some of the weaknesses of polymer when it comes to short-term wear. So I just don't like that. That, to me, illustrates why I don't like polymer. When two things come together and one of them is polymer, even if both of them are polymer, they're there's going to be considerable wear, much more wear than there would be if it was metal. Uh, and it won't it'll even out at one point before it stops happening anymore, but it really gives you an idea of how polymer wears. I don't like that. Uh, another thing about the polymer that is kind of in the aesthetic range uh, of polymer is I don't like how it tends to warp a little bit when it gets hot. So if you shoot your Glock a lot, your MP a lot, the dust cover tends to warp a little. Everyone knows the Glock pig nose. That's because the dust cover gets hot warps a little bit. Sometimes it comes like that straight from the factory because when it's cooling, it warps a little bit. Polymer tends to warp some when it heats and cools. So that's an issue. You get the Glock pig nose or you get that slack jaw look in m and I don't like that. Then one final thing, you know what? I've never had one of my metal guns eaten by a dog. Now, that might sound stupid, but it's something that can happen. And like I say, someone who was raised poor, I like to make sure that I know if something gets damaged, I can fix it. If my dog got a hold of my Beretta, what he would damage would be the grips, maybe the finish. I can replace the grips easily. I can refinish the gun. If it gets a hold of my Glock or my M&P and chews it up, well, that's the receiver of the gun. Once again, that gun is toast. You have to spend three, $400 for a new receiver part, the new main part of the gun. That's a lot of money to spend. I don't like spending money because I'm cheap. So I don't like that. So that's another thing I don't like about polymer guns, the fact that a dog could eat them. <laughs> but that's not a big issue. And like I say, does that affect performance? No. Does that affect uh, durability even? No, not really under normal use. Nothing that I dislike about polymer has any effect on anything short term or intermediate term. It's just long term things like polymer wearing a little more. Uh, if I was just going to get a new gun every five years and it was going to be my duty gun, it would definitely be a polymer gun because I wouldn't worry about those things. But I tend to think about what am I going to pass down to my kids when I buy a gun. Uh, and I, like I say, I don't like frame flex. Just hate it, hate the feel of it in my hand. So there are things about polymer that are necessary in polymer guns. And there are things about polymer that are unavoidable in polymer guns that I just personally don't like. Uh, it's not going to mean anything to 90% of the people out there. I totally understand where that doesn't bother you, but that's why I don't like polymer guns. It's got nothing to do with how they look. It's got nothing to do with what they are made of. It just, it just has to do with, I like something that I think in my head, whether it's true or not, is going to last forever. And I just don't think polymer lasts forever. And like I say, it has that flex and other things that I just don't like the feel of when I shoot. So the reasons I don't like polymer guns are totally 
totally my reasons, and that's fine. Uh, no one has to like the same things. So if you love polymer, great. I understand why you do. I just love that you love guns. <laughs> Even if they're polymer guns, I don't care what they are. I just like the fact that you have a favorite gun, period. Don't care what it is. But polymer just isn't my favorite. Thank you. 